Damn, D Rose. Why it had to be you? Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, y'all? Shout out to my boys on child support. Uh, yeah, I'm about to react to this. Uh, Cavalier shouldn't want D Rose back on the team. Damn, that sounds tough. Before I get into this video. This is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I think uh, D Rose for the most part he could retire but at the same time man I don't understand what he want to do in life he can't can he do anything other than play basketball like can he I don't know seem like basketball is all that man knew you know what I'm saying let me put a little bit more Make it sweet. This is gonna be a long video. But no, it ain't. It's only gonna be six minutes. <sighs> Crazy. I'm making it with Ruby Red, by the way. Grapefruit juice. I just gotta get right, man, before I see this. This is going to be tough. Let me put one more for a little quarter. This is going to be a tough video for me to watch. Damn, boy. I feel like I grew up on this man. Now, it's, now he out of there. That boy out of there. Out of there for good. Come on, d roll Just stay, man. Just stay. You feel me? and chill, you feel me? There it is. Just some Kool-Aid, man. You know what I'm saying? It was so weird. Uh, can we get to the motherfucking video finally, please? What are you doing, G? Let's go. Should the Cavs want Rose back? Fuck no. Nah, they shouldn't. Um, I think that, you know, it's one of those situations where you have to be concerned about the person. Uh, you listen to LeBron James. You heard the quote from Dwayne Wade. Uh, you covered this league. You hear a lot of different things, and there are things that are going on off the court that are none of our business uh, that Derrick Rose has to deal with. This is not the first time that he's had to depart from the team. At least this time, he had the decency to inform the Cavs. Uh, that he would not be there last year if you remember he was with the New York Knicks and he disappeared he didn't call anybody the New York Knicks actually sent folks out looking for him and the team was petrified that something uh, fatal may have happened to him and so when you look at it from that D Rose went AWOL like that he ain't even called nobody hey boy some he need to be on suicide watch to be honest with you perspective uh, there's a lot to be concerned about this guy. You got people in the streets uh, in the city of Chicago that might chide him a little bit, even though that's his hometown, because when he was in the midst 
of a $90 million contract playing for the Chicago Bulls uh, back a few years ago. He talked about how he, w he was concerned about his health because he wanted to be able to take his kids to, to school and uh, be healthy enough to walk to meetings and things of that nature. Nobody wanted to hear that. And then last year took place, and then this year this has happened. He's had four knee surgeries throughout his career. Uh, you look at the team that's presently constructed, there's really not room for him. Once Isaiah Thomas comes back, he's going to be your starting point guard. You have the best player in the world, LeBron James. In case no one has noticed, Dwayne Wade has been balling as of late, being the point guard for the second unit and leading them the way that he's been leading them. And so when you look at it from that perspective, from a basketball standpoint, it's suspect as to whether or not you're going to need him, not to mention the fact that his mental aptitude, his mental fortitude rather, his ability to deal with those adjustments, it may not be worth it for him mentally, emotionally, and psychologically. And then when you take into account some of the things that are obviously... For all my people that play NBA 2K offline, not the my park, my player, all that other shit, who've been playing it like how I've been playing it since 2K6, just regular games with the regular teams and stuff. When you load the game up, just play with the regular teams. Bruh, didn't the Cavs look hella alive when 2K first came out? D-Rose coming off the bench, Isaiah Thomas starting. You had all them people. D D Wade. All them. D Wade in the starting lineup. They team was live, nah. You ain't got Isaiah, you ain't got D Rose. You just what you got, Calder? Well, you got Wade playing point guard. I don't know. They team trash, nah. The Thunder them got better on the game, but the Cavs got hella worse. It's crazy. Uh, that whatever it may be is transpiring off the court. He has an awful lot to deal with. Taking all of those things into consideration, under normal circumstances, you'd want a guy to be around the team because you'll say being around those guys, Max, is a good security blanket. It's comfort, plus it's enabling you to compete for a championship. So there's a lot of positives were coming back to the team. But if it was so positive, why would he feel compelled to leave to begin with? I think when you hear LeBron James, when you listen to the words that guys like him and Dwayne Wade have articulated, these are two highly intelligent and accomplished brothers who knows what it takes and knows what's required and sort of understand and really, really understands what extends beyond the court of play. For them to speak the way that they're speaking leads itself towards, uh, towards indi indicating what I've indicated. There's a lot of things to be concerned about with Derrick Rose off the court. He needs to focus on getting his life together and his life in order as opposed to being preoccupied with basketball. Derrick Rose is a sports tragedy, in my view. The way Bo Jackson was, as great as Bo Jackson was in the heights he achieved in two sports, um, the really the question with him is the what if you know what if he hadn't had the hip injury what would have what could Bo Jackson have done we just got teased with that ability a 200 yard rushing game and these titanic home runs that he hit for the Royals and what could he have done had it not been for the injury and Derek Rose Derek Rose is like Bo Jackson to me he won an MVP that should have been LeBron's nevertheless he won it he was this you know as as fearsome as Russell Westbrook is and great as John Wall is and all these guys, athletically... I'm sorry, please don't dislike because I made fun of that. That's my nigga, man. Derrick Rose, to me, like Westbrook's comes not just from his athletic ability, but his level of aggression. Derrick Rose, athletically, had some fast, twitchy stuff that I thought nobody else had. He was just different. And I don't remember, Stephen A., if it was Marcellus Wiley or if it was the great Dr. Clapper, you know, from 7, 10 a.m., L.A. radio that you are now on, the Stephen A. Smith Show, who said it several years ago that Derrick Rose is like a, 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 like a Mack truck engine in a little sports car frame. Right, right? The, right. The, the engine was too powerful for the casing. And so he was like a boat that sprung a leak, and then he patches that up, and then another leak springs up, and after a while he just gets frustrated. He doesn't want to deal with it anymore. That's the one thing. That's the injury history of it all. And I could understand his frustration if we limit it to his physical maladies. And what I would say is you play basketball until they stop paying you. Basketball, baseball, this is not football. It's not boxing, MMA, where it's the same kind of health risk. 
I say you play until they rip the uniform off you. That would just be my view. Derrick Rose has, his, has to have his own view and the frustrations with his own body. Well, I get that. But then there's a second thing that you mentioned, Stephen A. Not just LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, but if I see Stephen A. Smith sit there and say he has to get his life together off the court, it's none of our business, you know, he needs to deal with that, then I take that very seriously, and I think our audience should too. So there, that's the second part of it, and maybe it's the more important part. So it's the physical situation that Derrick Rose is facing with injury, and then there's also his life. And both those things, I can understand if the frustration or the reality of it is he just can't go on. I would say if there's a way for him to go on, and I were the Cavs, I'd want the scoring off the bench. But if you can't rely on him being there because there are things that are out of his control, that's a different story. Well couple of things. Number one, we uh, ESPN had a report over the weekend talking about if he were to step away from the game, he would lose his $80 million contract with Adidas, or he'd lose something along those lines with Adidas. Um, I'm hearing that may not be true, that even if he elected to step away, uh, that the contract is ironclad, it wouldn't be that kind of a loss. If he knows he's going to get his money, from the things that I'm hearing emotionally about Derrick Rose, Max, I sincerely believe that it's, it might be wise for him to step away from the game, at least for this season, to get his life together so he can get back on the court. And I think that we all should applaud uh, the LeBron James of the world and D-Wade of the world. You don't have to get into specifics and reveal anything other than to say that right now he needs love and support mm -hmm. from friends and family and others as opposed to playing on the basketball court. Wherever he can get that, yep. that's where he needs yeah, what are you on child support or some shit? Damn. You need family support. What the hell happened to him? I don't know, man. But uh prayers out to D Rose, man. That boy he gave us a, a couple good years, man. I I don't take those for granted, man. You was an inspiration, you feel me? Hey, stay up, y'all, man. Like, share, subscribe. I'm about to turn up before work, and uh, let's get it, man.